Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, May 19th, 2021. I'm one of your host, Blessing, Addy Lee Jr. Joining me is twitch.tv slash Andy Cortez. Working with a new little coffee here, Bless. But of course, it always has cinnamon inside of it, okay? Sponsors Ooh. out there, big cinnamon companies, you know who you need for your face or your company, okay? So you're, you're not going ice today. You're not going Frappuccino. You're just going a regular coffee with cinnamon. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. talked about uh, last time we did that and also on a recent kind of funny podcast how at this point, bless it's sort of like whatever they decide to deliver, whatever I half sleepily tap and maybe in. I hit the plus button two more times and maybe I hit the minus button once. I don't know what I'm clicking on, bless, but whatever mm -hmm. shows up. It's 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 like a secret Snickers. You ever heard of the secret Snickers? Oh, no, yeah. I've not heard of the secret oh, Snickers. The secret What's Snickers? The secret Snickers? Is, Snickers? Is, that, is that like when you get a tater tot in your fries order? Uh, it's it's almost like that. It's a little secret mm. Snickers bless. It's something that I recommend doing when you go on plane rides, plane trips, plane rides. When you go ride a plane, um, mm. in the future when you know COVID's done, we can go travel and all stuff like that. What you want to do, bless, is at the airport you want to buy a Snickers bar. Whatever you okay. want to call it, or maybe you get a Reese's, or whatever you okay. want to get. I'll, I'll get, I get a, Twix. a Snickers, like Twix. but you still have to call it secret Snickers. And then you put it in your bag somewhere, and you forget about it. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the hotel, and you're out, and you're like, oh, little secret Snickers, I forgot you were here. And you just kind of like, it's a nice little pleasant surprise. You sort of uh, uh, have a nice little little treat waiting for you at the end of the day. It's like, oh, man, grueling like day that. of travel. Here's some here's some caramel and some peanuts and some nougat. Oh yeah, I like that. I'm gonna do, do that next to my nougat? travel. Nougat, uh, like a nugget. Nougat. Oh, nougat. nougat. You nougat. nougat. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. It's always a weird nougat. looking word. Yeah. Andy, enough about <laughs> new gets. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Summer Games Fest heating up, Last of Us getting a 60 FPS patch, and more, because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily, each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosteeth.com, or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily that was another one where I, I banged on the desk a little bit too hard i don't know if you guys heard that but it was harder than usual and i got scared because i heard a rumble and then i had the flashbacks of kevin telling me he didn't put all the screws in this oh, thing so for a oh. second i was like yeah for a second i was like oh shit here all we right, go finally it's happening by blessings <laughs> desk might fall apart at some point in the middle of the show Coming back hey to haunt you. It wouldn't be the first time furniture started falling apart in my Kevin's apartment. Kevin's off <laughs> in Colorado and he's like, if he taps it twice to one more time, this is where it happens. Oh, he's yeah, just, like, he's it estimated happens. it. You know, he waited I mean, until he went you, on vacation. You remember the wall shelf I had back there for like a week? Oh, yeah, no. it's not back there yeah. anymore for a reason, man. <laughs> oh, the no. night, that thing smashed down. <laughs> Almost broke my TV. It was great. <laughs> to be a part of the show, head to patreon.com slash games where bronze members or above get to write in. And silver members or above get the show ad-free with the exclusive daily post show housekeeping for you there's a new kind of funny games cast that's up right now it's, and it's a death loop preview that's right me tim barrett and paris got to check out a hands-off deep dive behind closed doors and we've broken down everything we saw uh it's a very good episode of kind of funny games cast uh and this one is it's one of them ones where like i feel like we've been on a roll lately you know i feel like we've had the good content now that games are coming out now that we're reviewing stuff now that we're previewing stuff a good old roll of podcasts that you guys can get that are previewing games and reviewing games and this is one of them so go check that out for the death loop preview cool looking game i'm more excited than ever for it yep so it sounds away. awesome. I think it's a great episode. Uh, and I think we asked all the right questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's mostly on me, not really a whole lot of Greg. Um, yeah, no, Greg yeah. was just chilling there. Yeah, he yeah. I mean, just take a nap, <laughs> right? If you don't want to be on the show, just don't go, show up, age. you know? Yeah, exactly. Parenthood, Remember that know? this week we're streaming for the Palestine Children's Relief Fund uh, on Friday at 11 a.m. 11 Pacific time on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. You can start donating right now and learning about the charity uh, at kindoffunny.com slash Palestine. And as I say that, I'm going to check over to see where we're at because I think our, I forget what our goal was, but I think we've smashed it, past it, our it goal. It was originally, I think, $5,000 uh, at the beginning of the week and before we even yeah. did the uh, before we even do the stream on Friday and just at the first day, like we kept smashing the goal we kept raising 12K. the goal yeah and so now like, we're at twenty two thousand uh, dollars holy yeah. shoot and our new yeah. goal is twenty five thousand dollars new That's goal awesome. sounds like new gat 
think about that. <laughs> new gat, new goal, yeah. yeah, new gat. Uh, thank you guys so much for that support. That is very awesome. And of course, our stream is going down this Friday, where we're really, we're really making the big push. But you guys have already uh, been so supportive about that. So thank you. And Greg Miller just joined the call. What's up, Greg? Hey, Greg. Yeah, great job promoting the stream and uh, kindoffunny.com slash yep. Palestine. I'm very proud of no you. No problem, man. Uh, I got here a bit late, though, and I saw a lot mm. of people talking shit about me, saying, uh, yeah, that Greg Miller will always lose, says yeah. Gustavo. Uh, fuck weird. Greg, says Cinematic Gaming Media. Yeah. Greg is tired dad already, said Cano Base Dakota. Oh, wow. Really bizarre. Yeah, I don't know what would have triggered that. I know, yeah, I don't know what would have triggered that. I love you, XOXO, would never say something about me like that, so mm. I really have to turn my attention to the Nitro Rifle, you know? That's yeah, weird. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe we can views on a video over on his YouTube page. Maybe we can clip something out. Company? Maybe we can huh. clip it out and see what happened. I don't recall anything. I think, I, I, I think you. the people just yeah. naturally felt that way when we brought up Gamescast and, and talking about Andy next to next to you, huh. Greg, and huh. just how people naturally yeah, feel about you next to the number one games journalist. You know, asking the natural questions. comparison. You know. Yeah, it's wild how we didn't say Greg's name on this episode at all, but Greg still right. felt compelled yeah. to show up yeah, on I'm kind of funny games content. Well, you know, it's, like, you know, it's like Greg has to be everywhere. Wow. Yeah, well, it's crazy. You know, wow. It's when crazy. I'm in the, Andy, when I'm in the thumbnail, does it do better views? You put me in the thumbnail right now, just That's real true. small. <laughs> put me <laughs> really <laughs> tiny in the thumbnail. I will. Hide me over the corner. I will. All right, bye, guys. <laughs> all right, peace out. Go unbox a PlayStation 5 so we can get some views on our content finally. That, uh, was, always, that was always the secret of, uh, of KFAF blessings, just like... Find a way to Oof, put Greg in there. Yeah, we don't know how to, you know, this episode, you know, it might be rough to pitch. I don't know if people are going to be into it. What if we get Greg to participate? Hell yeah, people show up in droves for that shit. Wow. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. Also, thank you to our Patreon producers, Blackjack and Tom Bach. Today, we're brought to you by Caviar and Credit Karma, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Rope Report. <laughs> it's time for some news. We have five stories today. A Baker's Dozen. Starting with our number one, Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest returns June 10th with a world premiere showcase. I'm pulling from Jay Peters at The Verge. Summer Game Fest is back this year, and it'll start on June 10th with an event called Kick Off Live that's billed as a spectacular world premiere showcase with more than, do more than a dozen world premieres and announcements. The show, which will begin at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, will be hosted by Jeff Keighley, who you might also know as the host of the Game Awards. Kickoff Live is just the first of many events that will be part of, the, of Summer Game Fest. Some of the publishers confirmed to be participating in Summer Game Fest include 2K, Activision, Blizzard, Capcom, Epic Games, Sony PlayStation, Riot Games, Square Enix, Ubisoft, and Mi Microsoft Xbox. This first event will also feature a performance by Weezer, who will debut a brand new stream safe game soundtrack song that can oh. be freely streamed on Twitch, YouTube, and anywhere else without being blocked or losing monetization, according to a press release. So take that. Was it Marvel's Avengers? Was it that uh, that uh, stream where like we had to keep muting it yep. during yep. our reactions? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The so take that. Square, Square Enix. Enix. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. not happy about that in the comments. Say it as we say it so, guys. This is this is crazy. Ah, uh, it's pretty good, man. Yeah, it's man. Pretty good. Uh, I mean, what's with these homies? <laughs> My girl <laughs> does nothing to do with it. <laughs> that lyric has nothing to do with the context. Yeah, sorry. Beverly Hills, but, guys. Barrett, I could have just cut it off right there. You stay with your joke. I shouldn't have added on. That's my bad. That's my bad. Bear, if you're able to bring up the tweet from Jeff Keighley, because he put out the tweet talking about the uh, kickoff for Summer Games Fest 2021. In the tweet, he did the, th the same thing where he, what, uh, that he did last year, right? Where he had the image with all the logos, gave it up here, right? And uh, so far, it seems like a pretty impressive lineup in terms of folks that are partnered with Summer Games Fest this year, right? Like I mentioned before, we got 2K Activision, Annapurna is involved, Bandai Namco, Blizzard, uh, PlayStation, which is a big one, especially because PlayStation is participating in E3 this year. Andy, for you, what are your hype levels for what Summer Games Fest is in 2021? It's the same every year. And mm -hmm. like I, I I know COVID aside, COVID definitely stopped the development and slowed down the development of a lot of different uh, a lot of different games out there. But it's I don't know, bless I still get excited for it. You know, it's it's similar to um bless i used to be a big golf fan right and even oh, if okay. the big hitters weren't in the golf tournament the major one i would still be interested in and want to check it out and it's no different here where yeah you know some of our bigger titles may not be showing up and maybe kind of hold your breath and maybe i'm basing this all on the fact that team cherry the developers of hollow knight said no there will be no silk song news at e3 um but i don't know i'm still stoked i mean it's it's our christmas this is what I, we get excited for this is what we get stoked for every year so either way i'm excited to get on camera with you 
with you hooligans and just joke around and have a good time. So I'm still very, very excited about this. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm also very excited. I think the idea of the kickoff live event uh, seems really cool because it feels like it's another added notch in the uh, uh, the grouping of the, the grouping of Jeff Keighley events that have been the Game Awards, but then then also Gamescom opening night live kickoff seems like it's going to be another one of those probably smaller scale uh jeff has been doing q a's and he he did a, a twitter q a where somebody asked him how long is the show and how many world premieres is it and jeff responded back saying it's probably around two hours 12 plus premieres i believe probably more than that and jeff also went on to talk about how uh a lot of the companies that he had on that list are going to be involved with kickoff live which is super super uh, uh awesome super exciting because because the idea that we soon might see premieres from uh, companies like PlayStation, right? Which they aren't involved in E3. And so there's the question of, all right, well, you know, when, why, when might we get more info on something like Horizon Forbidden West or God of War or what your fall lineup is or what the future of PlayStation is? Granted, this Bless. could be Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart because that game is around the corner. It's coming, what, June 11th? Yeah. Uh, so maybe it's just an update on that. But the potential it is there for... for yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope it's not also. Uh, but still, like the potential potential is there for bigger announcements from these companies that even might not show up at E3, which is really cool. Bless Fair, you really something. quick. Can I have you maybe restart Discord? I love yeah. you. You're freezing up. You froze up in a very funny position earlier. Uh, yeah, oh, it was a funny. It was, a, it was like two funny faces for sure yeah, that were yeah. stand out. I didn't. Now know my worry is you, Barrett. Uh, Andy. My worry is talk oh, shit about shit. me now, huh? Oh, hey, here I'm coming, he is. I'm coming in to uh, save. I'm coming in to save the day. Look hey, at this! Hey, you don't change anything. Wow, look at the you lighting. Got, you know, blessing can't even do it. You, 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 young bucks. You come out here. You're all like, oh, let's talk shit about Greg. Let's yeah. talk shit about Greg. Yeah. I don't and know look, what you're talking about. Dark, look how scary I look without the lights. That's on. what I'm <laughs> saying. Yeah, it really yeah. looks like <laughs> if we sort of digitize this and look and like change the voice, like uh, if you really look one of the voice modulator type Ooh. things. Yeah, it would seem yeah. like you're kind of like holding somebody hostage. or something yeah let's see this let's see this oh i kind of like want to see Bo if you ever want to see boris the tortoise again you'll say fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> kevin in colorado just freaking out right <laughs> yeah. now Jesus Christ. all right turn on your camera buzz i'm here how do i look am i better yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean it was it was totally fine it just immediately yeah, kind of like the, it wasn't the, like a yeah and like the last thing. minute like audio was like sounded a little funky here and there so i just wanted to oh, be safe half uh have have you fix that I mean, Vera, that's why I appreciate you. You call out the stuff that we need to call out so we can fix it on the fly. And so that's why you are That's why you do what you do, and that's why we're going to promote you and demote Kevin. Wow. Thank you. Yeah, Thank man. You. Wow. I said it. I don't think I have that authority, but I feel like if I, I say mean, it I don't enough, think you do. I, I everybody do might either. just follow along. You uh, know? Someone, hmm. someone who isn't Greg is the CEO now, so I, I think it's uh, it's whoever's call there. I think it's Bless. I think Bless is the yeah, CEO. Yeah, I think it's me. I think it's One me. thing I do want to point out about this, Bless, is uh, about Summer Game Fest. I love how official... It's, it all comes down to marketing, right? And to sort of get your hype levels up. And just calling it the kickoff live feels so official. It feels so... Yeah. Like, when you have the name, like, Jeff Keeley, and you have sort of, you know, everything he brings with that, right? All of the, the, the industry friends and connections and studios that he wants to not only help showcase their games, but even smaller studios that maybe won't get, uh, you know, huge spotlight... Calling your event kickoff live is just so sick. It sounds oh, yeah. like the, it, hey, anything else? It, this, it actually, it's actually beginning now. Like we're calling it kickoff because we're the ones who are doing this, and it just sounds really dope. And yeah, I'm stoked about all of this. Yeah, and I also want to point out the power move it is for kickoff live and this whole kickoff for Summer Games Fest to happen June 10th, being the week before E3 starts. Right, because like we have a question here that I'm gonna pull in from Parker Petrov, who writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like you can and says, Hello, blessing Andy. Blandy? Undressing. Undressing. I would undressing. say undress. Yeah. Undressing. I mean, I like the idea of putting my name uh it, first. It sounds sure, like I see that. It, it sounds like un undressing. Yeah, that was always the problem. Uh, like, how do how do we say your name? Andre? But like Blandy also makes us sound bland, you know, yeah. which is yeah. mm. we're not gonna win. Jeff Keighley put out more Summer Games Fest details today. However, I'm confused on what exactly Summer Game Fest is. Is this just a glorified Outlook calendar of gaming events featuring Weezer? As if this is just a calendar of events, or yes, as if this is just a calendar of events, I don't understand what this is doing uh, that Jeffy Grub Grub's Summer Game Mess isn't doing minus Weezer. And this is an interesting one because, I, I mean, I think 
it's way more than that, right? Like I, last year when Summer Game Fest started, first started becoming a thing, we talked about it a lot as being a calendar, but I'd say the key difference is that there is organization taking place. Jeff Keighley is talking to these companies to uh, understand like where their th- where their events are falling and helping yeah. helping organize uh, them in a way to where they're not overlapping in a strong way or that messaging is uh, is clear. You know, it's that along with Jeff Keighley also throwing his own events. You know, doing kickoff live doing uh uh gamescom opening night live and events like that uh it's an it's an organization effort over on video games chronicle they did a q a with jeff keely uh and this was i believe it was andy robinson i don't see the name on the article i believe it was andy robinson Robinson. yeah there we go uh and they asked a bunch of good questions uh i'm trying to find the question that actually had to do with this but andy as i'm looking for it oh there's something is it where they said that's uh, that's something new, whereas last year it was spread out and there were one-off events on singular games, but now you'll have 20, 30 games together in this one big show. So hopefully that will answer the requests from some fans. I guess that's sort of the concern that goes into it with, mm-hmm. like, uh, okay, it, it's cool calling this Summer Games Fest, but how many events is this? How many are events of these are yours? Because that was a lot of my confusion as well. When IGN also sort of had their involvement last year, I was like, wait, is this one of keely's things no no this one is though like there was a lot of confusion going into that um and i think at the end of the day if you are somebody who maybe doesn't follow you know who's throwing the party but you give a shit about the publisher or the developer you're going to show up for that regardless yes in the video games chronicle interview here uh, they asked the question your announcement lists a lot of companies such as sony and activision who are not participating in e3 this year could you give us a sense of how many of these companies are providing content for your kickoff show versus just running their own streams? And if so, why that uh, why that might appeal to them more than E3's model? Uh, Jeff's response, I know to fans, it's probably a little confusing because it's like, what's E3 and what's Summer Games Fest? And the way I think of it is that none of the companies that are part of Summer Game Fest are exclusively part of Summer Game Fest. People can do what they want to do. Most of the companies will be involved in the kickoff show with some with some content. Some of them will have their own events uh, and will save and will save some of their big announcements for those. We'll have a kickoff show, then we'll have individual events like Ubisoft Forward, which is announced for Saturday, June twelfth, as part of Summer Game Fest, and I think it's also part of E three. But it's ultimately Ubisoft's event, and E three and Summer Game Fest are co streaming the event, right? And Je- Jeff goes on to uh, elaborate on that. But I think that comes back to this thing that. Jeff is making a, a, a real big power move right here, right? And the way that he's positioning Summer Game Fest because Ubisoft Forward being June 12th, I would, I would think of that as an E3 event. I think sure. most people would think of that as an E3 event in the way that EA Play in previous years would line up in E3. And so we would just right. group it all into E3. What Jeff Keighley is doing with Summer Game Fest is making it something that he feels is equal to E3 and will take ownership or not ownership, but uh, equal partnership with these with these events in the way that an E3 would. Where now Ubisoft Forward, not only part of E3, part of Summer Game Fest, and also their own thing all at the same time. Um, again, it's an organization effort, and it's a way to kind of like give branding and and uh, highlight to these big events that are happening. It's 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 interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, it it still is confusing. Like, and, and I I do appreciate that Jeff Keighley understands the confusion and you know, does it isn't sort of dismissive of it because, um, yeah, like uh, sort of branding everything under that Summer Games Fest umbrella is, while neat and smart for the business, still ultimately confusing for the fans because they may say, oh, Ubisoft's event was that day, but what about Ubisoft's like Summer Games Fest thing? It's like, no, it's all sort of partnered in with us and we're co-streaming the event. Okay, so that, does that mean that you have your own hosts? Are you hosting... The watch along sort of thing, similar to way kind of funny does, because if so, mm-hmm. kind of funny games fest. Let's do it right now. Let's just start it. I mean, we could, man. We yeah, could. Let's just start it. You know. I'll, I'll, yeah, I mean, help put something together. Let's go. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. All in all, Honor. like, I mean, I'm excited to see what this looks like. I'm excited about the the companies that he has involved in it. You know, like, I mean, the questions remain of like, okay, you have the PlayStation logo on there. What does that mean? Does that right. mean just a trailer for Ratchet and Clank, or does that mean a PlayStation state of play and if it is a PlayStation State of Play, that's a big get for Jeff Keighley, right? To be able to even t- to to have that be involved and have the um, I guess partnership in in order to be able to announce that as as part of his own thing. Um, but 
again, we'll see with all of this how this how this all play, plans out. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. At at the end of the day, bless. Do you think that this sort of E3, I, I think the one we always remember is 2016, right, with God of War and mm -hmm. a bunch of those bigger titles being revealed. Spider Man was there as well. Um, do you think this will be sort of the E3 slash Summer Games Fest of announcements or of dates? Like hardline mm, okay. dates. Because I feel like because COVID sort of screwed everything up, I think maybe I'm hoping that the industry pivots and says, hey, all those games that have been delayed over the last year and a half, we're going to give you actual dates now. Like we, we know you all have been waiting for many of these titles and COVID screwed everything up. We're sorry. Probably should have been out this year. But now we can announce that on February 16, 2022, Andy's birthday, all the games are coming out, you know, something like that. I think it'll be an in between because we're at a place now where companies have uh, companies companies have started to tackle how they go about their announcements in very specific and different ways. Like PlayStation hasn't done the thing this generation yet, where they're like, "Here's what you can look forward to for the next three to four years." You know, like all their announcements that they made last year as part of the PlayStation Five showcase and presentations have been. Here's what you can look forward to in quote unquote 2021, right? All the announcements they made were 2021 announcements. Right. And in theory, can't wait I can to see... play God of War. Yeah, can't wait to play God of War in 2021. Yeah. In theory, I could see the case for them sometime this summer laying out, all right, here's what you're looking for. Here's what you could look forward to in the next three to four years. But the, but the question for me becomes why? Like, why do that when you can just focus on the imminent future and worry about the future future later, especially when the imminent future could be God of War and Horizon and these games that people are looking forward to. You know, I would think that this year, by this fall for PlayStation, they're going to be setting up the pieces for 2022. And what that will look like, well, probably be God of War, right? Well, maybe be Horizon Forbidden West that gets pushed into 2022. But could that be Spider-Man 2? Could that be... Uh, uh, like I don't know, an Uncharted game. Could that be like, we, what does what does Breath that year look Wild like for play, for PlayStation? Could it be Breath of the Wild two from PlayStation? <laughs> uh, but with that being the case, I think on the Xbox side, I think the door is open because they have so much they can talk about, and I think that for Xbox is going to be a thing of, all right, how do we build as much clarity as possible? Where people know about Psychonauts two, people know about Starfield, people know about Halo Infinite, people know about uh, people know that Wolfenstein three exists in some form, people know about the Indiana Jones game. How do we build clarity around all the stuff that that we have announced and build hype uh, uh, around it? You know, like how like let's put years to these things. Let's put dates to these things. Let's put let's put a date to Halo Infinite. Let's right. put a year to Starfield if that's coming let's out in twenty twenty two. Let's know. make commitments that make that give people clarity while also setting up the pieces of all right, cool. What if, and this is pure speculation, you know, obviously. But like, what if we gave more info on Perfect Dark? You know, what if we did a another cinematic trailer just to build hype? No date, no nothing, but. What if we what if we did a cinematic trailer or a gameplay trailer or a gameplay breakdown, something along those lines? I would love I could, I could see that meeting, being the case. I would love a meeting between all of the minds, bless, like all of the big heavy hitters in the industry. They all get together and they say, What can we do with Sam Fisher? Where could we put him next? Oh my god. <laughs> what game can <laughs> we put him in now? <laughs> Mortals, Phoenix Rising, DLC, yeah. Sam Fisher. You just see him like choking out people, stabbing him, stabbing him in the jugular and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, let's continue to speculate some more. Story number two: Warner Brothers Interactive will reportedly sp be split up following the Warner Discovery merger. This is Andy Chalk, and I forgot the, or I didn't, I, I forgot to include the website. Bear, if you're able to look up Andy the Chalk and see Andy what he today. writes for, crazy, uh, dude. Yeah, this, I mean, this is kind of funny. Andy Daly, Andy yeah, Robinson Andy earlier, right jeez, Louise. yeah. Uh, AT and T and PC gamer, oh, PC no, gamer. Thank yeah. you. AT&T announced earlier today that it'll, that it'll spin off Warner Media and merge it with Discovery in a $43 billion deal that will result in the creation of a new premier standalone global entertainment company Jesus. that will compete with the likes of Netflix and Disney Plus, according to IGN. Or sorry, it'll comp com compete with the likes of Netflix and Disney Plus. According to IGN, the deal will affect the video game scene, too. Most of IGN's overview focuses on the video aspect of the deal, but AT&T also told the site that part of Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, but not all of it, will be sold off. No details were provided on how the company will be split, but WBIE, Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment, is itself the parent company of roughly a dozen studios, including NetherRealm, Monolith, Avalanche, Rocksteady, TT Games, Playdemic, and WB Games Studios, 
in San Diego, Boston, Montreal, San Francisco, and New York. Some of those studios in the games they work on, Mortal Kombat, Middle Earth Shadow of War, Batman Arkham, and Lego, uh, to, name it, to, to name a handful, quote, will stay with AT&T and some will go with the new company, uh, end mm. quote, a rep told Axios reporter Sarah Fisher. The Warner Media Discovery merger obviously goes way beyond WBIE itself, but the game publisher has <clears throat> has been on has been on at least one other bargaining table recently. Rumors emerged in July 2020 that AT&T was looking to offload WBE, WBIE for four billion dollars, with Microsoft pegged as a possible buyer. A month later, however, AT&T seemingly changed its mind. This has been a big story that's been going on for the last week and it's been one of, it's been one of those ones where it's been so beyond video game uh yeah just the video game aspect of it that uh for me on kfgd i've been waiting for the right time to slide it in when we get more context and this is the context right that it seems that to some extent these studios will be split apart which provides so many questions of like how are how are games affected how are licenses affected uh when what does that mean for the suicide squad game and the batman uh, or the gotham 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 Knights game. Yeah, I was about right. to say Gotham City Imposters. I was like, no, that's not <laughs> it. Uh, but yeah, what does that mean for, for all that? Uh, plus. <laughs> but bring it back, though. Bring back 2012. Uh, but with all that, Barrett, I want to ask you, since you're you're a huge Batman person, you're a huge Warner person, like, yeah, and know, you've been following this, I find myself as far as I can being, see. like, a kind of big Warner Brothers fan, so it's, it's this is interesting. Yeah. Um, I, some of the studios in the games they work on, Mortal Kombat, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, Batman Arkham, and Lego, to name a handful, will stay with AT&T, and some will go with the new company. I say that, like, probably the big guns, Gotham Knights, uh, Suicide Squad, are probably going to be unaffected by this and uh production will probably go as normal with uh them probably staying at AT AT&T and then some of these other like but like outside of like the way it's worded right Mortal Kombat Middle of Earth Shadow of War Batman Arkham and Lego will stay with AT&T and then some will go so like I what outside of those franchises like like go over there like I, I can't even think of like what else they work on outside the, of these the things. question the the war the warning there is kind of bizarre that yeah. it is it's they're bad, talking about the games that they work on but they only mentioned shadow of war as if that's a franchise but really it's, middle earth is the the franchise because we got yeah, shadow of mortar i, I think, I think of they want i think they probably put that full title in because like when you just say middle earth uh, like i don't think that gets that point all across. the tolkien property yeah <laughs> um, yeah and then so and then to call it middle earth shadow is also kind of weird so just sure yeah i i think that's why they probably worded it that way um so yeah i, it, it, I would seems... love to know about the games that are that maybe these deals have stalled early development on and when i say early just like Oh, hey, yeah. we we pitched an idea. We yeah. might green light this in the next year. Oh shit, this deal's going down. Damn, doesn't look like it's gonna yeah. get made like anymore. things we don't even know about yet. Right? I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's gonna be interesting. But I think like I wouldn't worry about the things we know about already. Yeah. Uh, the for one sure. that they oh they they say to name a handful, but they didn't bring up Harry Potter at all, which I find interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Like specific because yeah. they like went out of their way to like name like their big specific hair, uh, hitters and like. But Harry, I also think yeah. that those are games that have like also come out and that are already game franchises. Yeah, that are already Harry established game. and stuff like that. Yeah, that's a yeah. good point. Um, yeah, I, this will be interesting to see like what the smaller studios and like how they all uh, work into this whole deal and what they're gonna do with uh, this new company. Um, but yeah, I'm not like I was kind of worried about all of this when it was popping off over the weekend and, and stuff like that of like, man, am I just destined to never get this Gotham Knights game, which is what I've been dreaming for. for like, nah, the last bullshit. Year. We're, we're going to get it. Yeah. We're going to get it. <laughs> do you think um, do you think this whole because obviously this is to compete against Disney Plus. Do you mm -hmm. think this at all affects the upcoming NetherRealm um, Marvel fighting game that is definitely going to happen that I'm, I'm, I'm still, I was never right sold that that Marvel fighting game was going to happen. <laughs> really? Cause it's just, like, it's so I hard mean, for you to believe. Well, yeah, cause plus you brought up the exact, cause we were talking about this uh, somewhere else where you're like, Ed Boone has also been bringing up, uh, what other Boone is a crazy person. He's been talking about Def Jam a lot lately and everybody's <laughs> like, Oh, they're going to make a Def Jam. And I'm like, no, Ed Boone is just a dude that likes to tweet. You know, he's just, <laughs> he's just doing his thing. He's like getting people excited. So it's making headlines. I like that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. He's just a dude that's vibing on Twitter. Yeah, I just love I just love that the James Gunn tweet. That was like the one that, oh, god dang it, Ed Boon. But I mean, to that point, to that point though, right? Like, 
I wouldn't be surprised if this would then open up the studios back to being sold, like they were, like the like the talks were last year, uh, with, with like separate Microsoft studios being possibly like being sold, a, a, uh, sold to different companies and kind of like yeah, their, like I like I think yeah. this might and like a lot of this is like wait to be seen, right? But like I, I wouldn't be surprised if this yeah would open up those talks if AT and T is like cool, we have some of these studios, but we don't want to do anything with these studios, and so let's sell them to Microsoft or let's sell them to another publisher in order to or let's make let's let them be independent or whatever the thing may be. And if NetherRealm got sold, that might open them up to make a Marvel fighting game, right? Like I think the possibilities are kind of up in the air uh, with all of this until we get more concrete answers in terms of what these where these studios are going. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Yeah. Story number three. The Last of Us Part 2 has gotten a performance patch for PS5. I'm pulling from the PlayStation blog where they write, one of the most requested items from our community has been to re- has been to release a ps5 performance patch for the last of us part two well today is the day and you can download the free patch right now once patch 1.08 for the last of us part two is installed on your ps5 you'll find a toggle in the display options that allows you to choose between a frame rate target of 30 fps or 60 fps this allows you to choose your preferred frame rate to complement the rest of the enhancements that are part of the PS5 backward compatibility with PS4 games, such as an enhanced resolution, faster load times, and more. The team has been digging into the PS5 hardware and the possibilities it unlocks since, lo- since launch last year, and we're excited about what the future holds. This patch is just the first step of working on the PS5. We'll let you know when we've got more news to share. Hell yeah, I already watched the uh, Digital Foundry breakdown video of it. They sort of Same. got the exclusive on it, yeah. and the uh, I guess it, you know usually to load into the game it would take about a minute and a half, and it was, it's now down about forty five seconds. So not a major improvement, but still definitely better. And then certain sequences that they noticed frame drops in on the PS4 Pro version, where you'd get thirty frames and you might drop to twenty five or whatever when you'd be on the boat in the water, kind of you know chasing yeah. this or you know the whole Seraphite uh, sequence. Um, no frame drops there, but there were still some frame drops when you are kind of it's like a very specific no spoilers, area. but you're in the you're, you're in a climbing this building and shooting mm-hmm. bow and arrows at seraphites, I mean, and there's a lot of fog. And I gotta assume it's the that volumetric fog that I was oh, yeah. getting. I'm, I'm gonna show it right now, Andy, if that's cool. Like, oh, it, go it, ahead. We're, we're go a year ahead. out from from this game, so I don't. I'm, yeah, I'm not too concerned. But yeah, they, just... they, and it's like this specific corner. I think he was saying too, like uh, this specific area where it's like, yeah, it drops down There's to like 56. a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, but they 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 talked about like how they found it interesting. Of like the it's visually like there's not like it's not the most diverse uh, environment in the game, and so uh, even in the original, like this area had like a little bit of problems. But yeah, you're probably right, Andy. It's it's probably all that volumetric fog that's going all on that right all those fogs, yeah. all that part, all those particle effects. But shout out to John Linneman who did the breakdown over there digital foundry i love those folks um yeah. that's a great breakdown yeah i love this I, I i love that they're doing this i love i i love all the upgrades that we're getting with next gen uh recently started up days gone and uh i've only played it for a few hours so far but in those few hours i've been blown away by how good it looks playing it on the ps5 you know and it, like in, in a way where when days gone first came out like I, I didn't that wasn't really the talk of it right people weren't talking about how technically masterful it was or anything like that but playing it on my ps5 within the last month i've been like yo this game looks gorgeous it looks it plays smooth uh uh and yeah like that's the power of next gen right and so i want to see them do this more and andy of course the question is when are they going to do this for bloodborne oh, gosh i mean like is it just going to get hung out to dry bless they i gotta be not. working on a remaster right like or something like, i don't know what's holding them back I don't, it, and of course, it takes work. Like Bloodborne, the, the, game that came, came out in 2015, probably not as high priority. But come on, bro, give it to us. Like the thing that, just all of this sort of Bloodborne stuff that isn't happening, and on PS5 and no frame rate updates. It really reminds me of Nintendo type decisions, where you look at what they're doing and go, "What are they thinking? Why are they not doing this? What what what's the issue? Why not put?" this game on super nintendo online store why not like what what's the fucking thinking behind this we're getting a mario party patch three years after the game came out or whatever it's those sort of decisions that really reminds me of this whole bloodborne thing that Mm -hmm. needs to happen immediately but the fact that there are modders out there that have already done it 
I don't understand what the holdup is, bless. I really, mm-hmm. really don't. I want to bring in a question here from a dog, Nick96 from Massachusetts, who writes in and says, Hey, Bless and Andy, with The Last of Us Part 2 getting a performance patch, does this mean we will not see a PS5 version? What do you think this means for the potential factions mode? Uh, if it comes, will it be on PS4 or have a PS5 version too? Hopefully this question makes it uh, as I'm pretty as I'm writing in pretty late. Either way, thanks for all the amazing content. You two playing through the Resident Evil games has been a blast. I'm just as scared as Andy when it comes to horror games, and I'm playing RE8 again on hardcore. Anyway, have a have an awesome day, my dog Nick96. Nick96 also what a hope you have an amazing uh, uh, day. And yeah, no, playing on hardcore, man, you're there. You're doing good. What a mistake. You're doing what an you're absolute doing great. mistake. You did have um, Andy never gets scared. I'm just saying, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Baron. Um Dude, I don't think there is will be a PS5 version of Last of Us Part 2. I think we might continue to get updates to make it more like a PS5 version. But even if that happens, I'm not sure what sort of improvements we would see. Maybe if there are certain environments that you don't get perfect texture work, or maybe they can still lower down those load times. Maybe, I mean, I don't really know what it is in that game that could use more improvements you know what i, I mean wonder, like i, I what, wonder if you can add ray tracing to it you know like do that plus dual sense features i know the reports that we got um earlier when the whole uh jason schreier report went up uh they were talking about bundling in a last of us i think it was the last of us remake uh with the last of us part two as a way of adding value to it like i wouldn't be surprised if they did something along those lines maybe they do the Last of Us factions or something, or find a way to bundle something in with the Last of Us Part Two in order to actually justify being able to call it a remaster. That's possible. Um, one thing that I, one thing that worries me about the potential of ray tracing is that, um, again, referencing the first uh, Last of Us Part Two Digital Foundry video where they broke all the tech down, and mentioning how the game doesn't have really any natural lighting, so a lot of the lighting you see is just faked because there's no electricity. And mm-hmm. so a lot of the areas that you're in shouldn't be as lit up as they are, but they are because they have to be, and you have to be able to see what, what you're doing in certain environments because there's no, there's no uh, you know, street lights out there uh, in certain areas where you're trying to sneak around. Um, so I wonder what they could do there with, you know, adding some sort of... Ray tracing in those areas really worries me as like, what would that even look like if they try to get too realistic? Does that change the whole vibe completely? Um, But I think if anything, we might just get shorter load times because uh, unless they do unlock the sort of full resolutions of things where, you know, textures that you may not even notice. I just think the game is so kind of flawlessly made technically that it's it's so hard to improve upon that. You know, when you go from PS3 to PS4 with the Last of Us Part 1 and you get that remastered version, an obvious, not only just 60 frames, but plenty of textures in those games got a lot of up you know? Like, we noticed that shit. But in this game, it's just like, this game's kind of almost technically perfect from a, you know, hardware, or, you know, from what's running in the background. It just seems really tough to improve upon that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm reading. A, I'm reading a chat from uh, Corn Seven Eight O Nine where they said, "I'm tired of games and movies having unrealistic lighting at night." And for some reason, that's really fun, that's really funny to me. That's not a thing I've ever thought about. <laughs> I've never once played a game and I was like, "Man, this lighting at night is really really unrealistic." I hate this. Unreal. I can't stand this. You're this is ten. bullshit. <laughs> the lighting well, at uh, night. Corn, I'm with you, bro. I'm with you, Doc. Don't let anybody bring you down, alright? <laughs> oh man! Before we get into story number four. Of course, I want to tell you about our sponsors. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can get the show ad-free. And speaking of ads, let Greg, or no, Tim, let somebody tell you about our sponsors. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Caviar. Loving good food doesn't necessarily mean you're able to cook well if you want a good meal but need a little help, let the restaurant come to you. Caviar can help. I do it all the time. Let's be honest, I can't cook at all. And that's fine because I have caviar to help me. Any food that I'm looking for, they will come deliver it right to my door. It's easy, it's great. Next thing you know, I'm eating some good food. Caviar is the food delivery app for people that are into good food. They bring the best local restaurants direct
directly to your doorstep. Other apps may have the national chains, but Caviar keeps it local. Those hidden gems in your neighborhood, they're on Caviar. And I know this well, all the local taquerias that I love so much are now at my fingertips and they come right to my door and it's fantastic. If you're not sure what you want to eat, you can let Caviar staff picks recommend the best spots in your neighborhood to find your new favorite. Caviar curates local options for every taste, whether it's the perfect Reuben from the sandwich shop or the best Indian vegan curry. You always have options for whatever you want and options are always good, my friends. Uh, just for you guys out there, Caviar is offering $10 off an order of $20 or more. All you have to do is put in the offer code kinda funny at checkout. Remember, that's $10 off a purchase of $20 or more with the offer code kinda funny. Download the Caviar app and use the offer code kinda funny. Kinda funny. And next up, shout out to Credit Karma. Okay, Credit Karma has always been there to help you make better financial decisions, and now they want to help even more. With a Credit Karma money spend account, you can be rewarded for good money habits. And who doesn't want instant gratification like that? Credit Karma money is a brand new checking account where you can win cash reimbursements for making purchases. When you use your Credit Karma money debit card, you can win daily instant karma purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. You just pay with your debit card and if you win you'll be notified on the spot and your instant karma cash will be added back to your spend account uh, credit karma money has already given away over three million dollars in instant karma to over fifty thousand credit karma members and counting that's awesome uh, right now you can visit creditkarma.com slash win money to open your free account and start winning instant karma go to creditkarma.com slash win money to sign up for free and start winning instant karma that's creditkarma.com slash win money who doesn't want to win money uh, instant karma is sponsored by credit karma no purchase necessary exclusions and terms apply see rules banking services provided by mvb bank inc member fdic maximum balance and transfer limits apply one more time that's creditkarma.com slash win money Number four on the Roper Report, Take-Two has announced plans to launch a new Gearbox franchise before April 2022. Take-Two has an... Uh Man, what? I'm doing a bad job of including my sources. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste this into Google, see who wrote this, so I can give them the proper credit. Take-Two has announced plans to launch a new franchise from Borderlands developer Gearbox Software during the publisher's current fiscal year, ending on March 31st, 2022. The company said on Tuesday that it intends to release 2021... 20 that intends to release 21 games during its current fiscal year, including four immersive core games, uh, two from proven franchises and two from new ones, according to CEO Strauss Zelnick. Gearbox's new game, which was mentioned during, publisher, during the publisher's full year earnings call, presumably fits into the immersive core category. Take-Two president Carl Sladoff said this category consists of titles offering highly engaging gameplay, uh, products such as Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, and Borderlands, plus the company's strategy games and sports simulations. Uh, Embracer Group announced in February that it was set to acquire Texas-based Gearbox for up to $1.4 billion. Following the announcement, 2K said it would continue to work with Gearbox and Borderlands with Gearbox on the Borderlands franchise and hinted at collaborations on other projects too. Andy, how do you feel about a possible other Borderlands or other uh, uh, Gearbox franchise before the next fiscal year? Well, first off, like how how are you going to put sports simulation games in the category as like Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead? <laughs> like those are the games that I think should be long in the immersive core. Um, as far as the news, I mean, we're always excited for new IP, right? And I think. I think Gearbox is the type of company that could possibly bring something new to the table. They've had their failings in the past. Uh, but, I mean, I'm more willing to bet on them than not, honestly. Um, it's it's exciting just to the idea of a new IP and what that could be. It's just, it's like whenever your favorite game developer is, suddenly says, hey, we're making something that's brand new and has nothing to do with any of our other properties. Like, sick, all right, cool. So we're not going to get the, the sort of sci-fi looter shooter that we're used to from you all what could what could it be mm. could it be a single player action rpg could it be um who knows could it be a multiplayer brawler like who, we don't fucking know but that's super exciting and i don't know i'm stoked yeah. for it um it, also immersive well, core what was the what was the publisher that was announcing that they were going to make a super game what was oh, the sega sega, sega. yeah <laughs> is these companies have different different I terms it. I love for the all jargon. the same thing yeah <laughs> this is all the weird jargon by the way the article was written by tom ivan over at video games chronicle thank you uh and yeah like I, this is an interesting one because 
Uh, I do wonder if it's going to be something that feels like a Borderlands. This almost reminds me a little bit, a little bit of Godfall, another game that was published by Gearbox, not developed by a, developed by Counterplay Games, but had a similar sort of like you know looter aspect to it that felt like it was trying to be uh, another Borderlands, but uh, didn't get the uh, like the amount of popularity that they probably wanted from it. Uh, I wonder if this is going to be a okay, okay, cool. We're 2K. We're gonna partner up with Gearbox again to create a Borderlands that isn't Borderlands in the way that we ha- we see plenty of publishers or plenty of developers, I should say, have uh, uh, multiple franchises that they rotate around that are both their core franchises. You know, I think of Naughty Dog with Uncharted and Last of Us. I think of uh, 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 Rockstar with Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. You know, I wonder if this is them going, all right, Gearbox, we gotta have the the uh the red dead to your uh uh sure. Grand Theft Auto with borderlands you know what's gonna be the the other one is this gonna um, be a prehistoric version of well yeah. what you know something in a different time and setting yeah or is this gonna be a borderlands primal. spinoff <laughs> borderlands primal yeah exactly border border battleborn but uh, what's that game that failed battleborn right battle yeah you got it right battle bo- border borderborn sure i'm done borderborn i'm done borderborn. So keep an eye out for that one. Uh, then our last new story on the Roper Report. Uh, five games are coming to NES Online and SNES Online for Switch, and none of them are Earthbound or Super Mario RPG. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo tweeted this uh, uh, on Twitter yesterday. Five titles are coming to hashtag SNES and hashtag NES uh, ha- uh, Nintendo Switch Online Collection on May 26th. For Super NES, Nintendo Switch Online, you're getting Super Baseball Simulator 1000. 1.000. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're also getting Caveman Ninja, also known as Joe and Mac. You're getting Magical Drop 2, and you're also getting Spanky's Quest. Fuck yeah, you are. Hell yeah. And then on NES, uh, you're getting Ninja Jaja Marukun. And then they also fin- finished off the tweet by saying, uh, no, none of these are Earthbound or Super Mario RPG, but be happy with it, you nerds. That's what they said. That's not what they said. I made that up. But, you know, again, this is one of those Nintendo decisions. This is one of those, like, what's the thought process? What are you planning? Surely Mario RPG will be packaged in some sort of special way. And it probably won't be. And it won't come out for another three years. It'll be added to to Nintendo Online when we're already on the next iteration of the console. It's not even (laughs) available yet anymore on there. Remember when... uh, uh, another <laughs> just a random Nintendo decision. Let's just call them like random Nintendo decisions. R and Ds. All right. Um, when the 3DS, the upgraded one came out, and it was like you can only play Zelda on this new version of this. You can't play Majora's Mask on the old version of the 3DS. That was some wild shit. Like I can't believe that was actually a thing that happened. Oh, yeah. And. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, Bla- uh, you know what I mean, Barrett? Like, yeah, how do you let it this was, happen? It was, it was because they added the the C stick, the, the right? right stick, the little yeah, fucking stupid yeah, nub. Little, it's just fucking, a wild, crazy decision dude. that I can't believe actually happened. Like, like, if that, I, hold on. I feel like if that were to happen today, that we'd be fucking going ape shit off of that shit. Like, are you, I have to buy the new console to play the remake of your old game on the like. Ugh, it's just it's just a whole thing. R and D is you know. Dude, I mean, virtual oh, console so is still a thing is, that. Sorry, is on their previous console is not available on, on, on the current one. And it's like, <laughs> bro, when we played Donkey Kong 64 for Donktober, Barrett had to drop off a Wii U. And it's like, I'm sure you guys have a way to make this work, right? I'm sure you guys have a way to, to, to make this carry forward. Hey, but if I could it's get Nintendo, that Wii U back, so. I really want to replay um, when, uh, Wind Dude, Waker come through. and uh, they're never going to port it to Switch and it makes me sad. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's go with WND's weird Nintendo decision. Weird, and it sounds uh, like WMD's Weapons of Mass yeah, Destruction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, yeah. my one thing is, so I, I opened up my 2DS XL because uh, this is the system that I played Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask on for uh, Zelda in review. And it does still have that C-Stick. I don't remember using it once, Andy, for Majora's Mask. Mm. I played it like on a plane once and I was like, all right, that's enough for that. Opened up. But are you yeah, gonna play the, the, the 2DS XL is a, a foldable one? Chat, come on. Yeah. Are you are you gonna They're, play you, Nin, they think Ninja Jaja Mario Kun? You can play that bear? Be up your alley? <sighs> probably. I'll probably do an in review for it. I didn't even know that game existed <laughs> until I heard that Nirvana the band the show uh, Super Mario RPG because they referenced nin- Ninja Jaju Maru Connect Razor. But I was like, wow, I didn't know that was a game. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I see it now, and that's all I think. It's Wednesday. It's We Shop Wednesday, actually. 
Andy, I'm so excited for one day Earthbound and or Super Mario RPG to come to Nintendo Switch online. But that's just so far away, if so ever. Far. If I ever want, if I want to know what's coming out to Mom and Grop shops today, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Out today, we got Outbreak Endless Nightmares for PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X slash S, Xbox One, and Switch. Zero Degrees for Switch. Sunless Skies Sovereign Edition for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch. Aerial Knights ne Never Yield for Switch, which I'm very much looking forward to. Dark Knights with Poe and Monroe for PC and Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, can we, can we get a trailer for Dark Knights with Poe and Monroe? Because I want to know what they're up to. What I spit Monroe water all over my screen, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Why was that so funny to me? Because it's like, bro, how dark are these nights? It's what the also, fuck are they doing? But also it's just like, the way it rhymes, like too. Greg, Greg's friend Poe? Like, what's going on here? I can't. I can't imagine two people named Poe and Monroe are having like the darkest. Like they're doing fucking cocaine on the street. What the fuck is bro? this? Oh, oh shit. dude, this is a fucking like one of those. All right, hold on, we got a Mr. Dude, show Beast it, show dad. it. I gotta see no, this. I got a Mr. Beast dad really quick. Hold on, all right. Thank you. Oh, Mr. let's watch Beast. the Mr. Beast dad. Shout uh, out, Mr. Beast. Uh, yeah, I, I know. You want to give me? So oh, much it was money. for it's, but it's like for honey, right? Isn't it? Uh, it's a Mr. Beast Honey ad. I always get Mr. Beast it's Honey. It's one ads. of these fucking like live action. No decisions. way. No, it's an no FMV. Way. Yeah. No dude. way. Okay, Hold on. Is another, this another ad? Okay, Mr. <laughs> damn, Beast. Damn, they're really what, going what hard. Do need? What do you need? Yeah, Honey. Honey is done. This I can't be the same people as the complex, right? What is that? Is he a ghost? Dude, if is you would have asked me, I thought it would have looked like Sam and Max. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a silly little animal thing, but kind of like with dark tones to it. I'm Who's on it. Poe I'm on. Who, who do you think Poe is? Right Monroe now, is? Trying to figure this out. Yeah, which Monroe. One do you think Poe is? Spoilers: uh, the the blonde girl's Poe because you think like, oh, clearly the dude and the redhead are Poe and Monroe. No, the blonde girl's Poe. Wow. Okay, so this is not related to the complex and the other games that we talked about on PS Love You a lot last year uh, and played through. But Wait, this, hold on. I mean, what's going on over here? I might play this. What's this dude? map. What is the what radar? Is that lady going Bring over? up your radar. Yeah. Oh shit! I miss it. I miss it. Wait. So the full playthrough. It's only two and two hours and twenty three minutes. That's just I, I mean, yeah, it's, it's got to be. It's like a movie, right? You can like, do that a, on one. It's... You can do that in one stream. It's an FMV dude, like movie with choices, game? basically. We, we could do this tomorrow instead of Resident Evil. Who cares? I'll be Resident totally Evil? Stupid, stupid ass game. I'd be totally down. Uh, also, out today, we got Crossroads in for the Xbox One. Dark Nights with Poe and Monroe. Uh, new days for you. We got Sludge Life. That's slotting onto Switch and Steam on June 2nd. Sludge Life is one of those games that I've been wanting to play forever, and I've just never gotten around to. They gave it out for free on Epic Games Store, and I still didn't get around to playing it, but it looks really cool. I don't know if you guys have heard of Sludge Life. Barry, it's funny, it. we got time. Look up a trailer for Sludge Life as I, as I get through this. I, I hope it's Is not it a skating game? It sounds like a skateboarder game. Sludge Life. No, it's like a first person. It, the, looking at it reminds me a little bit of Jazz Punk. If you play Jazz Punk, what? it's like a weird first person, oh, like yeah. walking sim with like a weird style to it. And that seems really like. What about sludge uh, makes you uh, makes you think of skateboarding, Andy? Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, sounds like a skateboarding game. Yeah, this this definitely does have a. Uh... Um, like accounting plus vibes to it almost. Yeah, Jeez, exactly. Vibe. Can I can I turn on the aliasing? Jesus Christ, that's, that's part, part of the part of the charm. It's part of the charm. The style. I love yeah, games with low this. anti aliasing. Love that. Yeah, shit. this looks fun. This oh looks man, cool. cool Greg bombing. We're oh bombing shit, out here. we got this fly. This seems he like a cool, cool Greg ass game, honestly. It yeah. really does. Yeah. So that's coming to Switch on uh, and Steam on June second. Uh, and then Formula One Fan Pack will be available in Rocket League on May 20th. The Falconeer then soars onto Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, and PlayStation 4 on August 5th, 2021. Andy, folks can go to kindoffunny.com slash you were wrong, where they write in and let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong. <laughs> so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube uh, and listening later on podcast services around the globe. What did we get wrong? I got one from Big Bad Beluga. Who's a friend of mine? I love I love Big Bad Beluga. Big Bad Beluga writes in and says, "Breaking news: The PS3 and Vita store will stay open." Big Bad Beluga, that happened weeks ago. Yeah, oh god, 
That's very old. Are you news. sure That's they just wrote that today? Maybe we're looking at some yeah, old. You're looking at it like a wrong. A wrong we day. we delete these every day. Like it's the same form. Hmm. Big bad wow. beluga anyway. in the chat says that's not me. <laughs> okay, so, so some somebody's smearing your name, Big Bad wow. Beluga. Wow! Wow! We have a, we have a there's a crime happening right now. Cyber breaking crime. news: Spider Man Two confirmed. <laughs> Uh, Miles Morales people, coming out. Multiple folks had written in and said uh, Majora's Mask 3D was actually on the original 3DS. Uh, Odd Doodle said they played it. There was one game you could only play on the fucking new one. Yeah. I don't know if it was Majora's Mask or not. But it like on the box said only available on new 3DS is what it said. Yeah. So figure your people life People are saying out, Xenoblade yeah. in the chat. Xenoblade. Was it? No, no way it wasn't only Xenoblade. There had to have been another one. Hyrule Warriors, people are saying. No, I would never be caught dead with a Hyrule Warriors game in my hand. Are you kidding me? I heard that uh, uh, Age of Calamity, though, is pretty good. Cool. <laughs> why was I so Yeah, why are you trying to take this about it? Like, wow. <laughs> I'm so aggressive with that. <laughs> Let's see. Odd Net... Odd, I'm just going to call them Odd Netnin. Uh, they write in and says, Speaking of uh, weird Nintendo decisions, Nintendo has announced a new Zelda and Loftwing Amiibo for Skyward Sword HD that allows you to fast travel between the sky and land, which is a major quality of life improvement that they're locking behind a plastic toy. Yep. This is a, a very yeah. weird decision uh, that, like, when Wind Waker was brought to Wii U, there were a lot of, like, good updates that weren't locked behind anything. Uh, I think there were mm -hmm. improvements to fast travel in uh, Wind Waker HD. And this is, like, a very weird update that would, like, honestly probably improve the quality of life for everybody who, want to pl uh, who wants to play either Skyward Sword uh, for the first time since uh, the Wii or the for the first time ever and to lock it behind this... WND. This Wii... Uh, yep. Yeah, this WND is just fucking absurd uh, if i were really announced dumb. right now that you can only access the the skyward sword map by using their phone app you would believe that because <laughs> that's a wnd like that yep. would totally happen like yeah. you have yep. to use their voice chat app which lets you talk to friends with that weird ass dongle but you can also open up this Hyrule Warrior or the uh, Skyward Sword map. Yeah. Like, this is a random ass shit. Shout out to Zeltic, who had a, a pretty good thread about it last night. Zeltic is like a pretty big uh, Zelda YouTuber. Uh, and uh, they're giving examples of like amiibos that like give little bonuses to be like fun. Like, all of the examples of Breath of the Wild, of like getting uh, Wolf Link in Breath of the Wild and all this stuff, right? But to, to lock like something that improves the design and like helps like uh, speed up some of the old design elements of the game is just yeah. it's like it's like absurd. if PlayStation today was like oh we're releasing 60 fps for last of Us part 2 but you can only get it if you buy this Joel action figure so <laughs> <laughs> come to GameStop no. <laughs> you nerds uh tomorrow's hosts for kind of funny games daily are Greg and Steve Saylor of course after this is the, is the live kind of funny Twitch stream uh Mike and Greg are doing the 100th daily Twitch stream ever since we started doing them daily this year. And so tune in for that. It's sure to be a good time. Also course, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bless. What's up? Um, we continue our Resident Evil playthrough, Resident Evil 8 playthrough, but we might cut it a bit short because tomorrow's a very special day for me mostly. Mm. I'm kind of making you do this. Oh, you're at not making me. I want to do this. At noon. I'm very excited. At noon tomorrow, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, we will be doing a watch along of the Overwatch 2 PvP announcement blowout, where they are having a long-ass video presentation, sort of doing a huge deep dive, similar to the one that we did, bless, where we did the first impressions of their yep. of their single-player sort of stuff. They're doing the same thing with multiplayer and how that will change in the sequel. So we are going to have a lot of our questions answered, hopefully tomorrow at noon That's Pacific exciting. time. Uh, how long yeah. is that, do you know? Because there could, there could still be time for tomorrow's stream to... Go back to Resident well. No, I think Blade. we start off with Resident Evil yeah, and play yeah. as much as we can. We don't cut the bullshit. We immediately go into it right at eleven a.m. Just like you know, but right now we're kind of going late, but it's fine. We go right <laughs> at eleven a.m. Bam, we're into it. No bullshit, no rigmarole, and then immediately at noon we hop right over. Yeah, we're gonna make it happen. It's gonna be dope. Mm -hmm. Of course, this has been kind of funny games daily each and every week at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. We run you through the nerd news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash kind of funny games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily. <laughs>